Hi, uh, it's Linda Lee, and welcome back. I have stacked in front of me uh, several projects that are unfinished, and I'm going to finish one of these. We got to make a, a selection on which one is next, and um, that's what we're going to do. So, what I'm going to do though is set each one aside. And we're going to take a, a quick look at what I have in my unfinished piles. Um, now, the first one that we're going to look at is something that you might recognize if you watch my channel. So this here is my 20 pieces of junk mail journal. So I was making a journal that um, basically took 20 pieces of junk mail and I created a journal out of it and I'm finishing it, preparing it for actual use. So um, I have collaging on the front and back and it was one great big envelope that I folded in half. So, uh, and then additional little envelopes and um, pieces of file folder and um, this here was a credit card ad, um, but you can see that for the most part, it's almost done. You know, there's not a lot more that I really need to do with it, uh, but it's not finished. So what I'm going to do is at one point finish this one so that it can either be used or sold or gifted something I think I was gonna make like uh, one of the uh, uh, specimen type cards out of this one but little pieces my collaging distressing and these pieces that have you know all this text on it I think I was leaving them blank so that uh, different like receipts or little ephemera pieces could be glued down and displayed um, I'll probably insert some uh, a signature in here kind of like I did on the other side but you can see uh, there's still a little bit of work to be done but it's so close and I've got a box full of little bits and pieces, you know, that I've been using. More junk mail. Um, you know, so that's that. I haven't done anything more with that one in quite some time. Um, in the next box, and as you know, or if you don't know, um, what I do is I separate everything by... Um, boxes so these two little guys don't really have a box but they are journal covers that I have made uh oh kitty they're journal covers that I have made and um, I just haven't done anything else with them yet so this is a hardcover book that I gutted I did already put designer paper over the inside flaps and made a tuck spot. The, this napkin here is what I dry decoupaged over the front, the spine in the back. And then I did a whole bunch of distressing with the inks, um, both a pink ink and um, the one that I use most is called Gathered Twigs. So I use that one too. Um, and then I, for whatever reason, I just have a couple few things that I had tucked in this little pocket that I haven't really done a whole lot with just yet. Kitty, what are you doing? And then this one here is another little hardcover book. This one I do have a couple of signatures that I've, you know, kind of put together for. Um, designer paper on the inside. And then this one is actually a gift bag from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can maybe see a little folded line right here. I'm not sure um, what really shows on camera. But yeah, this is a gift bag that I just liked. So I gave it a try. But again, 
unfinished projects. So two covers, no journals. This one is almost there. Um, then in the idea of a bulk creating, like our friend Kelly Snow, whenever she makes something, she always makes a bunch of them, right? So this little box I have had for almost three years. This is, um, I had a three year anniversary in June with Junk Journal Junkies, etc. And this was maybe the third or fourth thing that I had started. And it is a little project box that has three little journals in it. So let me show them to you. This. Um, let's see how I can take this all out. So this here was one little journal. So I already have three little signatures for it and a bunch of little stuffs to use in making, you know, tags or envelope, little envelopes, um, belly bands, everything, little bits of fabric that coordinate, index cards, guest checks, stuff that's already distressed and ready to create with. Um, and then this here is the second little bundle. Um, a little piece of fabric. Cat, what are you doing? Oh my God. Sorry guys. So I've got little pieces of fabric. Again, little things that are already distressed. Um, and then here are the three little signatures that would go in the second one. And the little fabrics. And then the third one. So I have little signatures, papers that are already kind of cut down and put together. And again, <laughs> uh, stuff that's already in that color vein for that little journal. They're distressed and kind of ready to go in creating little stuff for the pages. Um, and some bits of fabric. So I think that this all goes together here. So this fabric, um, I'm not sure what I had in mind for it because it's been a few years, but I was going to use that butterfly somewhere along the way within and that fabric for the cover. Um, what I was using for the covers are these little boxes for protein bars. So this one I can tell that I uh, was probably going to use. Um, I have some fabrics here for the covers too, I think. I think I had this taken with me because I was looking for threads. Um, and I took it to the, the fabric store with me. But these are all coffee stained on the inside already. And I was going to cover the outside and stitch um, somehow. I don't know. I have to kind of revisit to figure out what I was doing. But this here goes with that one. This fabric goes with this one. This fabric goes with this one and this is just more of I think these pieces for that one kitty let me move these so they're more in frame I just realized I'm not that in frame cat please lay down or I'm gonna kick you out and shut the door please Oh, he is such a needy cat. Um, but I guess aren't they all, right? So anyway, that's this project. 
and it would have been the first time that I actually did multiples of something. Um, oh my goodness. So let me just try and get this put away back in the box. <laughs> and I'll show you the next one and see if I can get Tango to cooperate a little more. So that's something that I definitely want to finish. Um, it was one of the first things that I, I started, um, but I just, again, haven't finished. I am so bad at getting distracted with kind of what's next that I don't always finish. And I need to start. Oh my goodness, kitty, please. Please? Please? <laughs> Can you smile for the camera at least? Open your eyes. Let them see your eyes. Look at, look. <laughs> okay. All right. So this next project is the journal that I was going to make for swap. We were doing journal swaps um, not that long ago. And my cat loves lace. Oh my goodness. He cannot leave anything alone. He has to have it for his. He has a pile of my bits and pieces that I've let him take. And if I put it away or bring it back into my craft room, he'll pull it out. So I just let him collect where he wants to collect. But these are flowers that I've made. Um, I need to make some more. But I had these pulled aside for this particular project. They're the only ones that I have left too because I've sewed through everything that I had. And I need to make more. I do have a lot of um, different fabrics that I've pulled and purchased and thrifted. Uh, I just need to cut them and melt them and then put it all together. Mm, excuse me. So I have these little guys that will go into this project. And then I have, this is just a napkin that I thrifted and I might use. So if any of you are, are, you know, kind of veterans at this whole thing, you know we always pull way more than what we're going to really use. So I have stuff in this box that I know um, I probably won't use in this project, but you have an abundance of stuff that you can select from. So I think I got this from Kelly. Uh, one of her little uh, doily bundles. She's got bits and pieces um, that came from her. I've got some different textiles that I've eco-dyed. This here is just a vintage napkin, or doily, I'm sorry. But I love the little scalloped edge. So I'm not sure how I'll incorporate this into it or not, but... Uh, this is just a little piece of cotton that I stamped and then these are eco dyed textiles. This is one of the first pieces of fabric that I put in one of my eco dyes. And it kind of found its way into this box and then it's just sat there. So I haven't done anything with it since. And this too. This was a turmeric eco dye, and this was just a, a turmeric dip. So you can see how pretty turmeric can be. It can get really super saturated in color. You got to really be careful with your hands. Uh, more 
eco dye textiles so this is like a, a pillowcase edge and you can see my little ferns that are in here so those are pretty cool oops sorry hopefully I'm showing you everything and I'm still in frame kitty I need to scoot you over more I think more fabric this is um, the bottom part of like a bed skirt so you can see my ferns and then other little stuff that I'll put in the journal itself so I have a few of this particular napkin I think this napkin is kind of my color theme or palette I guess I would want to use and I don't have a lot of blue mostly I have the greens and browns um, so I did want to pull in a little blue into the journal itself ooh, ooh, ooh. but some paper and then some of my eco dye stuff so again I'm not sure how much that I would use but I've got some papers in here so you, you can kind of see these were folded when I had them in the pot boiling and I didn't have anything on the, that side so this is you know for easy journaling you can easily journal here too um, but even feedback that I've gotten from some of the the girls that have bought my papers uh, they don't like to cut them and they don't like to write on them because of everything that's already there so I try to make um, more white space so that it's easier um, I got a bunch of stuff in this one so I probably won't use this one only because there's pink transfer from the outer cardboard uh, what I do is I recycle uh, like priority boxes when I receive stuff in the mail uh, and they have that red white and blue ink the red a lot of times will bleed and so it discolors my paper so I'll just use it for a different project not necessarily this one but some of those papers uh, this paper here is from Steph and group here is uh, some of the coffee paper because uh, at the time when I was starting this I didn't have the time to do a lot of oh my goodness the coffee staining and I don't have a muffin pan so I ordered some of the paper from her and so she's got some really nice darker saturated pieces and this one for whatever reason has the little bluish dots in it too so it works well because I wanted to bring blue in and then I have a piece of parchment more of my own eco dye and packaging paper some stuff that I printed I'm not sure where it came from but um, I think this is a music magazine that I purchased from this is 1930 and the paper is so delicate that I made photocopies of some of the pages so I've got some of that in here um, this is a photocopy of a sheer curtain this actually was like a curtain panel for like a kitchen window and I liked it so I'll probably do some fussy cutting of the little butterflies but this project um, has got a lot of stuff put together for it there's some of the music paper from that old magazine it was head tape on it and everything it was really cool um, I've got some of uh, Kelly's seam binding here um, this piece was white 
and I put it in the turmeric uh, with the other fabric so that it just coordinated and then I'm not sure if this was going to be the box for the cover probably or this was going to be the box for the cover I think I hadn't really decided on the overall size this one's a little smaller and this one is a little bigger and I had you know a bigger spine on this one so that's kind of this project so this has got a lot of stuff put together for it and it would be kind of easy just to kind of pick up and utilize what's here so I've got papers from a couple of different sources um, my own eco dye coffee dye paper from Steph bits and pieces from Kelly's shop you got to give everybody some love that coordinate all right so that's that project um, this is a big one things are already put together for it but it hasn't really been started yet uh, things have just been collecting in a box so this one kind of the same thing uh, this I had gotten I think this piece of ribbon kind of was the starting point of the everything that's in this box because of the purple and the green I and then the beige I love those three colors together and I also have this little vintage piece of um, lace just this piece that's all I have so these are kind of what inspired my collecting in this box <laughs> oh are you not getting loved kitty I know it's a cruel world it's cruel it's not all about you sometimes no just sometimes all right sorry kitty break but we got this purple green botanical and coffee staining so this here was in one of my eco dyes I don't think I used any real plants in it, at least in this fabric. It looks like I might have, um, but I love how dark some of the edges and pieces of it are. And then this little piece here that did have a leaf, isn't that cool? I don't know how many of you might have seen the video that I did where I attempted to make paper but isn't this pretty can you see it I've got little fibers in there and some seeds and um, I had purple and white paper for the pulp but what I did is I left it in a cookie sheet to dry and then I had to scrape it up <laughs> off the cookie sheet to get it out. So needless to say, I have pieces of that paper um, that I will use in this particular journal because it works very well color-wise. I have this that I got from a friend. I don't remember what she was doing with it, but she never used it. So she just gave it to me because she knows that, you know, I do stuff. I make stuff. And it found its way to this box because it looks perfect these here are cabbage water can you see so this was red cabbage water that actually is purple and I didn't add anything to the water to change the purple and then I also have this uh, little linen placemat 
that I put in the same water. Again, works well with the colors. Uh, this here are little bits of ephemera that I got from a friend that we did a project swap. She had these little extra pieces in there, so that found its way to the box. A little stamp that I've never used, not yet anyway, but I think it goes really well. A green envelope, some tissue paper. This was packaging from uh, something that I got from China. It's got little Chinese writing on it, but I thought it would go really well with, you know, this journal. <coughs> Some of my Edith Holden papers, I don't have very many of them, um, but I have a couple here that I was going to put in this journal. Some vintage wrapping paper. So this here, again, kind of falls into my color palette really, really super well. Super well. A cookie bag. Um, and then little bits and pieces. So this here, I don't remember why I made this. Uh, this isn't typically something I would put together. I'd have a lot more, um, you know, off a, a plain tag. I'm not sure what this project was. It could have been, um, oh, maybe it was that 10 minute challenge that we had where you're just using what's on your desk at that very moment. So it could have been that, um, but it found its way to this box. I've got some satin ribbon. Uh, these are from my guys smoking. I still get the little pieces of foil from his packs. I've got little bits of my own snippet that I had made that found their way into the box that I can um, do a little more with. But that works. I have this I got from Kelly's shop. So this is a, a little piece that I have left of these little purple roses trim that she had. Um, little string another piece of a ribbon I guess it is I'm not sure where this one came from maybe one of our swaps but anytime anything kind of fits um, I put it in this here I don't remember who made this but this was from our CD swap uh, I have a video of how I made mine the only thing is I didn't write down who this was from and I don't think I have her name in here. So whoever you are, if you see this, definitely let me know who you are because I love it and it's going to go in this journal. Um, I have other little bits and pieces. I don't know what these are from, but they kind of fall into, again, the color palette of what I'm doing. Uh, this here was gifted to me, probably in some rack. See, look at these little herbalist type pages. I don't remember who sent me these either. If you know, if you recognize this, um, definitely give a shout out. Um, this looks like it was cut from the bottom half of a book. So like they, it was from a larger page, but aren't these pretty? So I put these in here because you got it. It kind of goes. Um, and then these were in here, right? So let me do that. 
And then somebody made me this. I don't remember who. See, that's why everybody, when you make stuff for walls of inspiration or just for swap, um, put your name on it. Because look at this awesome little folio or I don't even know what to call it it's almost like a little wallet but it's got tuck spots both front and back and then you can put other little items on the inside and tie it shut and then this fits into a pocket or it could be glued down isn't that pretty but I don't know who made it anymore because it's been in this box for a year and a half no, maybe just a year. Um, so sorry, I'm taking the time to tie this, but anyway, uh, silk leaf from some silk flowers that I have. Somebody gifted this to me as well. And then these little guys, I'm not sure where these came from either. But I know somebody made them and sent them to me. So I've got like three or four different girls working here. And I don't have any of it written down. A little scrappy pad that I kind of started to make. Or maybe I made it for another project and it found its way here. I've got some lavender buttons that will work really well coloring wise. Um, I've had these buttons for, I don't know how long. I bought them for a, a sewing project years and years ago. Uh, but I never used them. But they're here for this project. And then I've got, you know, a nameplate, piece of sticker, some clothing tags, book pages. This here is going to be the cover. So it's a little taller, you know, than our typical pages, but that's cool because I have bigger pieces of paper I can use. I got a vintage birthday card that works beautifully with my colors. Um, and then little pieces. This was a gift bag that I just kind of opened up a little bit. It's still sealed. Um, I just took out the, uh, you know, the, the side folds that I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. You get it. Ledger paper, these papers. Oh, I'm going to show you what I did to get these papers in a different video. Um, but what I did is I kind of took a book apart. And then I have this stuff here. And if I'm not mistaken, these... I'm not even sure. I, I think they were from a paper pad that I cut apart. Yeah, because see here is where it perforated. So they're just like seed packets. This is from a gift bag. Another, these are gift bags. No, they're not. This is from the same paper pad. Because see, that's the same flower. But I do that. I'll cut out the words from a gift bag. And little frames. This here is from an address book I had way, way, way back when. Remember when we used to use address books? This was the piece that was inside the plastic cover. So I took it out so that I could use it in this journal. And I guess I really don't have to go through more, but I've got some ribbon lace pieces. Uh, you know the, the string handles that are in gift bags? This is actually the inside of one of those. I unwrapped the gift bag handles and I have these strips that I was going to use. So one of these times I'll show that in a video too. 
And then this is a gift tag from some piece of clothing. Coffee filters. I have a bunch of those. Um, and here's the original piece of ribbon again. And then this one we actually came off a box of chocolate. So, okay. So I'm going to kind of shove this all back in here. And we'll move on to the last unfinished project that we're going to look at. And after going through all this, I think that particular project is going to be the next one, no matter what. Um, this is another one that hasn't been started yet. But it will be very easy to pick up with everything that I've got in the box. And it will be fun to use some of my um, friend's work, too in my own snippets, little bits and pieces from Kelly's shop. And I've never really used vintage wrapping paper yet, but I'm looking forward to that. In my Edith Holden pages, I've never used those. I'm afraid I don't want them to be gone. So, these pieces, who made me these? I kinda wanna say, these came from Cat. Cat, are these your work? I don't know. Let me know. Okay, so let's set this one aside now. And the very last box that we're going to look at is my design team project with Tsunami Rose and Daisy Collins. She was so gracious to accept me into her design team. Then I went to work full time from being retired and I never finished her journal. So this um, is all her digitals. And let me show you kind of where I'm at. So this is just a hardcover book that's been gutted. And all of these papers that are in here, I've either uh, done avocado dye or coffee dye. Um, mostly my spray technique that I do, I call it finger painting. But these are all her papers. I printed it all out on cardstock or regular copy paper. So this here is avocado paper and some coffee staining. So this is a little insert. And then these here are a couple signatures that'll go inside the book. So again, more avocado paper. I did spray the papers and once they got wet, the color bled through from my printer. <coughs> but I love that. It adds a little bit of something to the paper without having to go full out, you know, coffee or avocado dyeing. So again, I sprayed the backside of the paper and the ink bled through. So... Let me show you. I probably did it on all of them. Yeah, so we've got some subtle decoration without really doing anything. It was just a matter of spraying the backside with water and letting it dry. So anyway, I have a couple of... Okay, this is Tsunami Rose. This is her Azalea collection. I, do, I apologize. I don't remember the name of it. But I should look it up so that I have it. But I need to finish this one. There's no excuse not to. Um, I haven't decided what I was going to do with the cover yet. But I've got, these are the signature covers. So I can put these. Oh my goodness, Kitty, you're starting to take over. So 
also signature covers. Pocket. Pocket. Same thing with this. Pocket. Pocket. This here is um, one of her digital prints that I kind of fussy cutted the edge. And, uh, yeah. So these are hers. And I just sewed around the edges and did some distressing to the back. Distress, stencil, stamp. So this one is, is pretty close to, to being fully assembled. And I've got some little pads that I made, some postcards, little tags, and a little booklet from envelopes with a signature inside. So yeah, I really need, here's um, some little cards here tickets I handmade some tickets just by chunking out the corners with my little I have a little circle that I just chunk 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 take all those out so this all here goes in here and then we need to decide the cover now, not too long ago, I made myself a little lunch tote, and this is a spare piece from that tote that actually really works with these colors. <laughs> Kitty, stop. So I have this to kind of play with and work with. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. Cat, you're interfering with my stuff. <laughs> so I have this that I might utilize in the cover. I don't know for sure just yet. Um, I have this fabric that has been avocado dyed. It's just a, a soft piece of cotton. And then I have some spare bits and pieces that are all from, you know, off cuts of her printables. I have some threads that I kept from the uh, placemat and then see tsunami rose tsunami rose.net and then I have some of these this here is all from Kelly's shop and <laughs> yeah <laughs> Why don't you tell me your sad story there, Tango? Huh? How nobody loves you? Nobody. So, anyway, uh, this is torn pieces of vintage fabric that I got from Kelly's shop. And this as well, this here is probably what I'm going to use in this particular project right here. So, she dyed, tore, and then bundled this up around a clothespin, and she did the same with this. This actually is, I don't think was dyed, this was just a vintage fabric that she tore into ribbons, same with this one. Um, this one here is one of my favorites. I don't know if I'll use it, the print. Because I think I wanted to let um, Daisy's stuff speak, you know, without without another print kind of competing. But this here too is beautiful. I have a hard time inking this stuff, um, but Kelly did all the work. I ordered three bundles of it. I've got two left because I've used them. But it's, again, vintage cotton that she dyed, tore, inked, and then bundled. So, and then I have some of the original strings, too. But 
she's got some great unique stuff that's fun to incorporate into your journals um, but I definitely have aspirations to use this stuff in this particular one and then I think that's all I really had in my box other than some random pieces of ledger paper so this is my next project I'm going to finish is the Tsunami Rose journal. Um, the design team journal that I should have done a year ago. Daisy, I'm very sorry. But I'm going to do you proud. Hopefully you enjoy the final result. So I think I only have um, one or two videos in the playlist for this project. So I'm going to continue with that and um, probably one or two more videos and it'll be done. So the nearness of you. I don't, I kind of don't want to cover this up because I like it. Um, but you never, I, I still don't know what I'm doing with the cover and I think that's part of the reason why uh, it's still in the box because I didn't know what to do for the cover. But that is my collection of unfinished stuffs. So now that you've seen it, uh, this is the next one. And if you don't mind, comment on what you would like me to do for the next one. If I don't get any comments, well, then I'll just pick one and pick it up and finish it. But this is going to be the next project. Thank you for tolerating uh, the lengthy display of unfinished stuff, as well as my kitty. Um, I made the mistake of leaving the door open, so otherwise he howls on the other side to come in. But I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.